What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode three of our intro series to the rule set for Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kit. If you've been following along, we've already done the basics of character creation, skill checks, and now we're going to be covering basic combat, both melee and ranged. If you've been following along, you also know that we've been doing this leading up to our Extra Life event on Saturday, November 2nd, where the squad and a few special guests are going to be playing Cyberpunk Red live. The start of combat always begins with initiative checks. This is a reflex plus a d10. Both playable characters and non-playable characters will make these checks so the GM can decide the order of combat. Depending on the GM and the number of combatants, they might decide to have just all NPCs go at the same time, but it's really up to them. Now that we know the actual order of combat, starting with the first character's turn, they have two options to do during a turn, a move and an action. Since moving's pretty easy, we're going to be focusing on the action portion of that, specifically combat. Depending on your character, you might be a ranged focused attacker or maybe melee. Or depending on the situation, you might be improvising and using a mixture of both. First of all though, we're going to cover ranged actions. These are things like shooting a pistol or a shotgun, anything of the sort like that. To do that, you make a roll based on your marksmanship value plus reflex plus the d10. The GM is now going to compare this against a range table that differs based on the weapon used as well as the distance the target is away. This is a little different than other mechanics like D&D where you have an armor class you're targeting against. This is independent of who you're attacking and the chances are the same that you're going to attack someone and be successful. There is a caveat though. If the defender has a reflex above 9, they can choose to attempt to dodge the ranged attack rather than just have the GM go against the ranged table. To do this, they have their dexterity plus their evasion skill plus a d10. In the instance of a tie, defenders always win. Congratulations, we're gonna say you hit your target. Next up, you roll your damage. In this case, you're using a heavy pistol which does 3d6 damage and would you look at that, you rolled a perfect 18. Unfortunately, the target you're shooting at does have some armor on. In this case, heavy armor jack which has a stopping power of 15. Unlike D&D and some other ones, Armor in this game actually works as damage reduction. So you take your 18 damage, you subtract the 15 stopping power, and ultimately only deal three damage to your target. One thing to importantly note though for armor, if you deal damage to the target, so you've surpassed that stopping power, then that stopping power reduces by one for next time. So in this example, this target had a stopping power of 15. We successfully did damage thanks to us rolling a perfect 18. And now next time we attack that target, the stopping power will only be 14. To repair that, you're gonna have to go to attack or maybe somebody else you happen to know to fix it. There's some other specifics about ranged combat, including targeting the head, suppression fire, and three round bursts, but we're gonna talk about that actually in episode four where we go over some advanced combat mechanics. Next up, we're covering melee fighting. Uh, this is actually pretty unique because it does categorize them into melee weapon fighting and then brawling, which is just bare knuckle. Melee weapon and brawling gives you two attacks per turn. This can be separated with a move action, so attack, move, and attack, and can be against different targets. It's important to note though, melee weapon fighting deals damage to armor, whereas brawling does no damage to armor at all. So why would you ever want to do brawling? Well, it actually does massive damage if the target's not wearing armor. It scales dramatically with your body score, and depending on that, you can be doing 4d6 damage per attack to two attacks per turn. Uh, Unfortunately, if the target is wearing armor, then you're gonna need to wear that down first, using a melee weapon or a ranged attack. The benefit for melee weapons is, again, you get two attacks which are independent. 
That means if you deal damage on both attacks, their armor is going to decrease the stopping power by one for each attack, which is called ablating. Okay, we know what the differences are between melee weapon fighting and brawling. Now, how do we actually do that? For melee weapon fighting, again, attacking twice in the same turn, it's the attacker's dexterity plus the melee weapon skill plus a d10. This is always going to be against the defender's dexterity plus evasion skill plus a d10. If you're going with brawling, again, attacking twice per turn, it's attacker's dexterity plus the brawling skill plus a d10. This is the same as melee weapon in that you're going against the defender's dexterity, evasion skill, and a d10. Combat isn't always accomplished though with weapons, whether they're ranged or melee or you're brawling. In Cyberpunk Red, coolness is always a factor and it's amazing what a face down can do. A face down is when two opposing parties clash with a test of wills and they have their cool plus their reputation, both good and bad, plus a d10. The loser will have to either back down from the encounter or take a minus three to any future checks against the winner due to fear until they're defeated once. And there you have it, the basics of combat. We've covered ranged, melee, and face downs. Next time on episode four, we're gonna be covering some more advanced combat techniques and death. So until next time, we appreciate you watching. As always, again, stick around for Saturday, November 2nd, where we're gonna be doing Cyberpunk Red live for twitch.tv slash slightly salted squad for extra life to raise money for kids the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. But until next time, guys, stay salted.